Cache OS claims to deliver lightning fast speeds for Linux gaming, but is it actually better than Bazite on the ROG Xbox Ally X? Let's find out. Hey, I'm Coulter, and if you're new here, this channel is all about retro tech and handheld gaming and a good dose of installing Linux where it might not belong. So if that sounds like you, be sure to hit subscribe below so you can catch all the future videos and antics we get up to around here. But today we're diving into Cache OS, and someone in the comments on a recent video where I was talking about Bazite, maybe it was vanilla SteamOS, commented that Cache OS should give you better performance than either of those. And so of course, you don't have to tell me twice, I installed it, benchmarked it, and had some interesting results. So let's get into it. So first things first, what even is is Cache OS. On their website, they're very clear that their goal is performance and speed. And they do that by being based on Arch Linux. Arch Linux? I think it's Arch Linux. I don't use Arch, by the way. And pre-installing as few packages and services as possible to minimize unnecessary bloat out of the box. But the really cool thing, and why we care about it in this video, is that they made a handheld specific edition, which supports Steam's gaming mode, making it feel much more like SteamOS, similar to what Bazite does. And also important, that handheld edition officially supports the ROG Ally, as well as other handhelds like the Lenovo Legion Go. That was all I needed to know to want to try this thing out, so let's get to installing it. Installation was surprisingly straightforward, but with a few quirks. Now you can dual boot Cache OS alongside Windows or whatever other operating system you have going on, but I wanted to keep things clean and not touch my original SSD, and so I went ahead and swapped in a separate SSD and let Cache OS take over the whole drive. And when we're only talking one terabyte storage mediums, it's not a bad idea to have a lot of headroom because when you split your partition, you have that much less room for games because I've tried and it's not a good idea to share a games library between Windows and Linux. Just probably steer clear of that. As for the install process, you just need to download the Cache OS handheld ISO, flash it to a USB using Etcher or Rufus or whatever you prefer, boot into the BIOS of the ROG Xbox Ally X by holding volume down plus power, as we've done in previous videos where we installed Bazite and raw SteamOS on this guy. We'll press Y to go into the advanced settings, then head over to security, we'll disable secure boot, and we'll save our settings. You can probably do these steps all in one shot, but I like to then plug in the USB, boot it in the BIOS again, select the USB drive, let it boot into the default boot option, and then you'll eventually see the KDE-based Cache OS live environment. And that's where I almost messed up up the installation process because there's this nice little guided tour that pops up when you first boot into KDE, but I closed that immediately and then started hunting for the install Cache OS button, but I realized a few minutes later that the install Cache OS was in that little getting started pop up at the bottom of the menu. So once I found that button, then it was pretty standard Linux installation stuff where you pick your time zone, set up your partitions, in this case I'm using the whole SSD, choose your desktop environment. When you use desktop Cache OS, you can choose things like Cinnamon or Gnome or whatever you wanna do, but on the handheld version, it's just KDE, which makes a fair bit of sense because KDE is really good at touchscreen support and it's kind of the standard for Linux on Windows gaming handhelds right now and it's what SteamOS uses too, so why change it if it ain't broke, right? One annoying thing toward the end of the install process though, I thought it had hung because I had this terminal window that had popped up and it still seemingly showed like progress was happening. But eventually I got curious and I tapped back over to the main installation window and it said the install had been done for a while. So I was like, oh, okay, reboot. So if that happens to you, just flip between the windows to see what the true status is of the install process and you should be okay. And after that reboot, I got a very SteamOS like onboarding sequence where I can choose my time zone, always the time zone, pick my language, join the Wi Fi, and then I had the login to Steam QR code prompt and then I was pretty much good to go. And at this point, it felt a lot like after I installed vanilla SteamOS 3.8 on this handheld. Check out that video if you missed it. But right away, there's a point in Cache OS's favor over SteamOS, and that is that the top right button actually opens the right side menu instead of doing nothing, which vanilla SteamOS did. If you recall in that video, I had to use the Xbox button plus A, I think, to open the right side menu. But thankfully, the top right button opens that menu as it should, and then the Xbox and ROG buttons open the left side menu as they should, so yay, all the buttons are working. However, when I tried to start installing games to it, they were all getting like corruption errors, but I did see that there was like a minor update pending, so I went ahead and just installed that through the Steam interface and let it reboot, and then all my games could install just fine. So moral of the story, I guess, is keep your system updated. Who knew? Quick sidebar, if you wanna get really fancy with Cache OS, I believe you could technically use this JSAW dock that has a dedicated M.2 SSD slot built in, install Cache OS directly on that M.2 drive, and with some boot manager magic, you could have your docked OS for your kind of desktop high performance docked mode, and then your portable OS that runs off of the internal SSD, allowing you to swap between the operating systems depending on where you're gaming on, which 
would be pretty sick. Maybe let me know in the comments if you want me to try that out in a video. Plus, this dock is just slick anyway, with gigabit ethernet, 4K HDMI 2.0, two USB 3.2 ports, and 100 watt power delivery with 100 watt power brick included. So thanks to JSOP for sending this over, and be sure to check out the link in the description if you want to see more. So back to Cache OS, now that I've got my games installed, I need to set up TDP control on this thing so that I'm not at the mercy of the random default TDP this might have set. Now on Bazite, this is easy because Bazite comes with an overlay that lets you control the TDP right out of the box, as well as remap your buttons and a few other handy batteries included features. On Cache OS, I kind of expected something like this, but I scanned the docs and tried various plausible button combinations, but no, no built-in overlay, unfortunately. But then I realized that kind of makes sense because Cache OS's mantra seems to be to not install anything out of the box that you might not need. So from Cache OS's perspective, it's like, you want TDP controls? Install them yourself, fair enough. So I booted into desktop mode, made sure that my Steam controller desktop settings let me open the virtual keyboard using the X button. Then I installed Decky Loader exactly like I did on SteamOS 3.8 by going to Decky.xyz, run the installer script, proceed through the prompts, set my root password, then installed Simple Decky TDP and HueSync from their GitHub pages. I won't go into too much detail on those steps here as I covered it in more detail in my installing real SteamOS 3.8 on this handheld video. And I'll link that video in the description if you wanna check it out. How this process differed a bit from installing it on SteamOS though is there was this weird hiccup in that when I tried to install Simple Decky TDP, it said installation successful, but then I flipped over to gaming mode and the TDP controls weren't there. Then I went back to desktop mode. When I tried to install it, I noticed that earlier in the terminal command, it had an error saying, oh, I can't find 7-zip. And I was like, oh, right. Cache OS doesn't pre-install a bunch of stuff for you like other operating systems like SteamOS or Bazite do. And so I have to install 7-zip for it to succeed. The command was simple enough. It's just sudo pacman. Yes, pacman. It's a pretty fun command. Dash capital S and then P7-zip. And after running that, the simple decky TDP installer ran without issue. Meaning that when I flip back over to gaming mode, I finally had my TDP controls in the decky launcher as I should. So I could of course then crank the max TDP to 35 watt for my benchmarking later. I also tested out HueSync to see if it would let me control the RGB of this handheld, which a lot of these Linux distros have struggled with. And yeah, no, still no dice. HueSync is still unable to control the RGB on the ROG Xbox Ally X. And at this point, I think we're just waiting for kernel drivers or something to be rolled up. So we'll probably see support for that within the next couple of months, I'd guess. But first, a quick shout out to this video sponsor, PCBWay. If you've ever wanted to bring your own idea or design to life, PCBWay has a ton of services to make that happen. From CNC machining, to 3D printing, to injection molding, to circuit board printing. Basically, if you can design it and it's for a cool maker thing, they can manufacture it. They even just did a super cool custom CNC job of aluminum for Macho Nacho's original Xbox prototype video that he recreated. Fantastic video, awesome creator. Shout out to Macho Nacho, by the way. And right now they're running their big Christmas sale where you can save up to 50% off various services as well as discounts on parts and materials and even some free upgrades. So be sure to check out the PCBWay Christmas sale now while it's on. And thanks again, PCBWay for sponsoring this video. All right, with the TDB controls in place, now it's time to benchmark this thing. To keep things consistent between Bazite and Cache OS. I use Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Dead Redemption 2, both at 1080p, medium settings, no FSR, no upscaling, no frame gen. On this channel, we like real frames. <laughs> and we'll test both games at 17 watt TDP and 35 watt TDP. Now, a quick note on Red Dead Redemption 2, it actually ran out of the box just fine on Cache OS, unlike on Bazite, where if you recall, I had to boot into desktop mode, install a custom version of Proton, which was GE Proton 10.17, and fix some graphic settings on the desktop end before booting back into gaming mode. I didn't have to do any of that in Cache OS. So Cache's benchmarks are gonna use the out of the box Proton and the Bazite benchmarks were using the GE Proton 10.17 Proton. So that's just important to note because if Bazite pulls ahead or behind or whatever, its custom version of Proton is likely related to that. And it's just another reminder that when we're running Windows games on Linux using Proton, there are some of these configuration differences that can either limit or maximize the amount of performance we can get on Linux-based operating systems for gaming. All right, so here's how these two distros stacked up. Starting with Cyberpunk 2077 at 17 watts. In Bazite, I saw a 32 FPS average, min of 24. And in Cache OS, I saw a 29 FPS average, min of 24 as well. So Bazite got about a 10% lead here. At 35 watt turbo, the difference was even narrower, where in Bazite, I got a 44 FPS average, average, min of 39, and in cash I got a 42 FPS average with a decent drop in min at 30 FPS. And so on average, Bazite still led at about 5%. Over to RDR2, starting at 17 watts, 
Bazite had a 45 FPS average with a min of 35, and Cache US had a 38 FPS average with a min of 29, meaning that Bazite pulled ahead by 18%, which is pretty significant. And over at 35 watt TDP, Bazite had a 53 FPS average, min of 36, and Cache US had a 49 FPS average, min of 40, meaning Bazite led by about 8% here. So across the board, Bazite consistently outperformed Cache US, sometimes by a little, and sometimes by a lot. The biggest gap being at Red Dead Redemption 2 at 17 watt, where Bazite was nearly 20% more performant. But possible proton differences affecting things aside, even in Cyberpunk, where they both use the default proton settings, Bazite still edged ahead at both power profiles. So does that mean that Cache OS is just a no-go for handheld gaming? Not exactly. Here's the thing. I actually like Cache OS's philosophy. I like focus on performance, add what you want. We'll give you a really pretty installer process so that you can use Arch Linux without having to use Arch Linux and then once it's installed, you just do what you want with it. And in a world of Windows 11 jamming everything we don't want into the operating system and holding back what we do, I do respect an operating system that's just trying to get out of the way. So if you know your way around Linux and aren't afraid to use Pac-Man on the terminal to install packages, then Cache OS might be just perfect for you. But where Bazite shines is the batteries included aspect. As soon as you finish that installation, yes, it looks like SteamOS, but you hit a button and you've already got TDP controls, fan controls, RGB controls, button mapping. And that stuff alone saves you about 15, 20 minutes of installing Decky plugins over in desktop mode. And that's just for installing simple Decky TDP and HueSync. I don't necessarily mind having to install the Decky plugins to be able to control TDP and the RGB and whatever. That's what I have to do on real SteamOS anyway on handhelds like this. But if I were to pick between Cache OS and Bazite to install on say my wife's ROG Ally, I would choose Bazite because A, it's a lot easier to tell her press this button and then you can change your power profiles. And it's less work for me so that I don't have to put into desktop mode and bring up the virtual keyboard, use some terminal commands, install plugins, blah, blah, blah. Like that's not gonna feel very console-like to her. And even for things like custom Proton settings, Bazite's desktop environment comes pre-installed with a custom Proton version installer, which is how I resolve that issue in Red Dead Redemption 2 so easily when I did have issues on Bazite. Whereas in Cache OS, I considered trying to track down that same custom version of Proton, but I would have had to research and find a suitable custom Proton installer and then make sure it works and make sure it had the dependencies to install, like when I had to install 7-zip manually. And at the face of it, it just seemed like too much work for a tweak that the majority of you probably wouldn't care about in this video. Unless I'm deeply wrong about that, in which case, let me know in the comments, but please be kind. So at the end of the day, if you want a minimalist, little bit of DIY, Arch-based handheld OS that does give you the Steam gaming mode, then yeah, Cache OS is your man. But if you want apparently better performance and less hassle, then Bazite seems to be the clear winner here. That being said, distros are evolving all the time. So flash forward a week, a month, and Cache OS could then be the clear winner. Who knows? But at the time of this filming, Bazite appears to be the winner. However, if you know Cache OS in and out and you see something that I glaringly missed, please let me know in the comments and I'll happily pin a comment sharing those findings for the good of the class. And while you're in the comments, go ahead and drop a penguin emoji in there if you're on team Cache OS or a controller emoji if you're on team Bazite. I'm really curious if I swayed any Cache OS fanboys over to Bazite or if somehow I've done the complete opposite here. And hey, if you like this video, you'll probably like the one where I installed Bazite on the ROG Xbox Ally X as well as actual SteamOS 3.8, which took a bit of trickery, but maybe it would be more worthwhile than Cache OS? Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.